Triadobatricus superficially resembles modern frogs, it had a broad head and a very reduced tail. Its skeleton had many features associated only with frogs among amphibians, including a very frog-like skull with big eyes and their characteristically elongated hips. However, it couldn't have hopped like modern frogs. Instead, it would have walked around on land more like a salamander although it is unknown just how much time it would have spent on land in the first place anyway. Notobatricus is of particular interest to scientists because they exhibit features that are intermediate between the more primitive amphibians and the later, more advanced frogs and toads. Studying them helps shed light on the evolution of modern amphibians. These amphibians likely inhabited freshwater environments, such as ponds, lakes, and rivers. They were carnivorous and likely fed on a diet of small aquatic invertebrates. Oriental fire-bellied toads are one of the most plentiful amphibians in their native lands, particularly the central part of their range. The toads are diurnal and studies have found that while they can acquire some from their diet, they rely partly on sunlight to obtain adequate levels of vitamin D. While not a true toad, their green and black skin is covered in small tubercles, giving them a toad-like appearance. Their sounds, mainly produced by males during the mating season, are very unlike those of other frogs. The end Cretaceous extinctio had little overall effect on the Paleobatricids, and they continued to thrive in the warm wet environments of Europe during the early Cenozoic. Paleobatricus was probably the last species of these frogs. It inhabiting inland temperate areas where winter temperatures weren't too harsh. During repeated glacial periods the temperatures became too cold for them, freezing the water they depended on but the warmer climates to the south were also too dry for them to migrate into. African clawed frogs are relatively large and robust frogs, with females typically larger than males. These frogs are entirely aquatic and are highly adapted to life in water. They have powerful, webbed hind feet that make them strong swimmers. They have played a crucial role in scientific research, particularly in developmental biology and genetics. They were widely used for pregnancy tests in the mid-20th century due to their sensitivity to human chorionic gonadotropin, a hormone produced during pregnancy. They have mildly toxic skin secretions that serve as a defense mechanism against predators. However, their toxins are not harmful to humans. The Suriname toad has a distinctive flattened body with loose, wrinkled skin that resembles wet leaves. This cryptic appearance helps it blend in with its aquatic environment. One of its most remarkable aspects is its reproductive strategy. Rather than laying eggs and externally fertilizing them, the female carries her eggs and developing embryos on her back. The male fertilizes the eggs as they are embedded in her skin. During breeding, the male clasps the female, and she releases eggs, which the male then fertilizes. He presses the eggs onto the female's back, where they become embedded in her skin within small, fluid-filled pockets. Over time, the eggs develop into tadpoles and eventually emerge as fully formed toadlets. These toads often use a slow, 
deliberate movement while swimming or lying in wait. Beelzebufo was very big and bones of the skull roof show a rugous external surface, indicating at least parts of the head may have borne bony scales, called scuts. The skull sutures are open in even the largest specimens, showing that it might have grown even bigger. It most likely was a predator whose expansive mouth allowed it to eat relatively large prey, perhaps even juvenile dinosaurs. Too bulky to hop, Beelzebufo probably spent most of its time walking around, burrowing into the soil to escape the heat of harsh dry seasons, and eating whatever it could fit into its enormous mouth. The Indian purple frog is one of the many discovered frogs that have evolved over time, allowing it to easily adapt to its underground environment. The frog spends most of its life underground and surfaces only during the monsoon, for a period of two weeks, for mating. With few field scientists out in the field during the rainy season, the species was discovered and studied only in recent times. This species has been found to forage underground, feeding mainly on termites using its tongue in a special buccal groove. The major threat to these amphibians is caused by the alteration of natural habitats by an ever-increasing human population, resulting in large areas being converted for settlement and agricultural use. Goliath frogs are massive amphibians, with some individuals reaching lengths of up to 30 centimeters or more and weighing over 3 kilograms these frogs are native to the fast-flowing rivers and streams in the rainforests of Central Africa. They are usually found near bodies of water with rocky substrates. They are sit-and-wait predators, lying in wait for prey to come within striking distance. Females lay their eggs in fast-flowing streams, and the male fertilizes the eggs as they are released. The tadpoles are washed downstream and develop in quieter waters. Some evidence suggests that West African frogs may change sex from female to male after having successfully bred. Animals that switch sex as adults are known as sequential hermaphrodites because they have the gonads of either sex but at different periods of their lives. This contrasts with animals which are simultaneous hermaphrodites which have both gonads at the same point. However, this sequential hermaphroditism in reed frogs has only been noted once and in a captive colony, it is not generally accepted by scientists that this process occurs in amphibians. Despite a lack of evidence for hermaphroditism, the film Jurassic Park has become a cultural reason for why many believe that frogs can be sequential hermaphrodites. Ostrocaparina are rather generalized frogs in their morphology and appear mostly to inhabit leaf litter. Finger and toe tips are flattened and disc-like and most species lack toe webbing. Fry's frog is an infrequently seen species that appears patchily distributed because of difficulty of encountering it. In the past it has been threatened by habitat loss caused by logging. At present, development for tourism could represent a localized threat. Wilhelm rainforest frog's tympanum is only barely visible at its lower edge. The supratympanic fold is weak. The fingers and toes bear well-developed discs. Preserved specimens are dorsally purplish-brown, with an irregular pattern of dark markings. These markings may sometimes form rugged dorsolateral lines or join to form a network, but only rarely reducing the lighter background to isolated spots. While not known for loud vocalizations like some other frogs, banded bullfrogs can produce a series of low-pitched, 
raspy calls that are often described as chirps or croaks. These calls are used in communication and can be heard during the breeding season. Their diet primarily consists of small invertebrates, and other small prey that they can capture with their sticky tongue. They are adaptable species and can thrive in both urban and rural environments. Banded rubber frog is found in southern Africa. Its natural habitats are savanna, dry shrubland and freshwater marsh. These frogs release a milky toxic substance through their skin. This substance is toxic both to other frog species and humans. Southern leopard frog lives in many types of shallow freshwater habitat and sometimes in slightly brackish water. During warmer months, it moves away from the water for most of the time, it is mostly nocturnal, but it can be active during the day and the night, especially during rainfall. In northern parts of its range, it is dormant during the winter, where it remains in well-oxygenated, unfrozen water bodies. The larva is mottled, and the eyes are positioned on the top of the head. Common frogs metamorphose through three distinct developmental life stages, aquatic larva, terrestrial juvenile and adult. They have corpulent bodies with a rounded snout, webbed feet and long hind legs adapted for swimming in water and hopping on land. Common frogs are often confused with the common toad, but frogs can easily be distinguished as they have longer legs, hop and have a moist skin, whereas toads crawl and have a dry warty skin. The spawn of the two species also differs, in that frog spawn is laid in clumps and toad spawn is laid in long strings. As an ectotherm, the common frog is very reliant on temperature as it directly influences their metabolism, development, reproduction and respiration. Around three years after being born, the common frog will return to its original site of birth and release a mating call. Males will be the first to arrive at the pond and await females as they enter. During this period of pre-female competition, the pond is significantly male-dominant, and there is a large amount of intrasexual competition taking place. The brown mantella is a species of frog in the family Mantellidae. It is endemic to Madagascar. Its natural habitats are tropical dry forests, savanna and aquatic environments. It is threatened by habitat loss. Members of Mantella are known for their bright aposematic coloration or cryptic markings. They have small, angular heads, with large eyes that are either entirely dark or have lighter coloration around the edge of the iris. Kajika frogs live in montane streams, lakes and the surrounding forests. Their diet consists of insects and spiders, while tadpoles eat algae. The male creates a territory on top of a rock on the riverside and does a mating call. The name Kajika, meaning river deer, comes from this cry that sounds like the cry of a buck. Around 500 total eggs are laid across multiple sessions in the water, usually underneath a rock, between the months of April and August. The egg sacs are 5 cm in diameter. The eggs hatch after roughly 2 weeks. Gliding flight has evolved independently several times among frogs from both New World and Old World families. This parallel evolution is seen as an adaptation to their life in trees, high above the ground. Characteristics of the Old World species include enlarged hands and feet, full webbing between all fingers and toes, lateral skin flaps on the arms and legs and reduced weight per snout vent length. These morphological changes contribute to the flying frog's aerodynamic abilities. They live almost exclusively in the trees, and leaps and flies from tree to tree or to bushes. When threatened or in search of prey, they will leap from a branch and splay their four webbed feet. 
The membranes between their toes and loose skin flaps on their sides catch the air as they fall, helping them to glide, sometimes 15 meters or more, to a neighboring tree branch or even all the way to the ground. They also have oversized toe pads to help them land softly and stick to tree trunks. The gastric brooding frog had a highly unusual reproductive strategy. After internal fertilization, the female swallowed her fertilized eggs, which then developed in her stomach. The stomach would produce a substance that inhibited digestion during this period. Once the tadpoles had fully developed, the female would give birth to live froglets through her mouth. This process involved regurgitating the fully formed froglets. The cause for the gastric brooding frog's extinction is speculated to be due to human introduction of pathogenic fungi into their native range. The turtle frog is found in between Geraldton and Fitzgerald River in the Perth region. This area is mainly semi-arid, so the frogs have adapted to suit this region. They have developed short muscular limbs to help them dig into the sand but, unlike most frogs, they dig forward, like a turtle. They feed on termites so the adaptation of the muscular limbs is useful when trying to penetrate a termite mound. They do not need to live near standing pools of water, as they undergo the entire metamorphosis stage within their eggs. Alabates frogs are known for their bright and vibrant coloration, which varies between species. Their colors often serve as warning signals to potential predators, as many species of poison dart frogs produce toxic skin secretions. They are known for their complex communication through vocalizations. They produce a variety of calls for mating, territorial defense, and maintaining social bonds. These vocalizations can be quite intricate and are important for reproductive success. Stevens rocket frog is a diurnal, terrestrial species spending its life in forest litter where it forages on invertebrates such as termites, beetles and flies. Breeding takes place in the rainy season. The male finds a suitable location and calls to attract a female. The nesting site is a boat-shaped curled-up fallen leaf with another above acting as a roof. The female lays three to six eggs with gelatinous capsules inside the hollow leaf and remains at the nest for about an hour. Anthony's poison arrow frog is diurnal and terrestrial. Males are territorial. A clutch of 15 to 40 eggs is laid on the ground among leaf litter, and the male guards them till they hatch in about two weeks. He then carries the tadpoles on his back to a suitable water body where they develop into frogs in about 60 days. Epibatidine, an extremely toxic nicotine-like substance, was first derived from and named for this frog. Once investigated for possible use as an analgesic agent, the alkaloid proved far too toxic for any application in human medicine and is presently used exclusively for research purposes. Golden poison frog is normally diurnal, they live evenly spaced without forming larger congregations. This species is an unspecialized ambush hunter, an adult frog can eat food items much larger in relation to its size than most other dendrobatids. It is one of the most poisonous animals on the planet, these frogs produce deadly alkaloid batricotoxins in their skin glands as a defense against predators. To become poisoned a predator generally must attempt to consume the frog, although this species is so toxic that even touching an individual frog can be dangerous. This extraordinarily lethal poison is very rare. The green and black poison dart frog is semi-arboreal, hunting, courting and sleeping in the trees. However, as it is a small frog, 
it cannot jump far enough to span the distances between trees, so it returns to the ground when it wants to travel. To assist in climbing, the frog has small, sucker-like discs on the ends of its toes, which create a slight suction as the frogs climb, making their grip mildly adhesive. The blue poison dart frog is a mainland animal, but stays close to water sources. These frogs spend most of their awake time, during the day, hopping around in short leaps. They are very territorial and aggressive both towards their own species and others very much like other poison dart frogs. To ward off intruders, they use a series of calls, chases, and wrestling. Although poison dart frogs are known for their skin toxins, used on the tips of arrows or darts of natives, in reality only the species of the genus Philobates are used in this manner. In captivity, the frogs lose toxicity as a result of altered diets. The strawberry poison dart frog is often found in humid lowlands and premontane forest, but large populations are also found in disturbed areas such as plantations. It is perhaps most famous for its widespread variation in coloration, comprising approximately 15 to 30 color morphs, most of which are presumed to be true breeding. Oophaga pumilio, while not the most poisonous of the dendrobatids, is the most toxic member of its genus. The common coquis are nocturnal and their behavior is influenced by the surrounding environment, specifically the moisture levels. When humidity levels rise at night they emerge and begin climbing to their homes in the canopy. As these humidity levels decrease, they move back down to lower levels where the humidity is higher. The younger coquis populations live in the understory on leaves during the drier periods. The leaves are particularly common with this population because they provide protection from invaders. As they grow into adulthood, the coquis journey up to the canopy and begin the process stated above. The yellow-striped pygmy aluth is relatively brightly marked in orange-yellow and among the smallest frogs in the world, up to 1.20 cm in snout, to vent length with males marginally smaller than females. It is part of a closely related Cuban group that contains five additional described species and at least one undescribed species, most of which are of tiny size, relatively brightly colored and possibly aposematic. In species where reproduction is known, males river frog are territorial, suitable wet rock faces are a scarce resource. Furthermore, mature male feature characteristic clusters of dark spines on the inner portions of the hand. It appears that these are associated with male-male combat, probably in conjunction with territorial disputes. Scratch marks in males, but not in females, support this interpretation. The eggs are laid on rocks with a thin layer of water. Tadpoles are semi-terrestrial and have a depressed shape, long tail, and bulging eyes. Cururu lesser escherzo is endemic to western and central Argentina. Its natural habitats are montane forests, montane grasslands, rocky outcrops and shrubland. Breeding takes place in permanent streams, the development of the tadpoles takes about 8 months. It tolerates habitat change but is threatened by water pollution and fires caused by agriculture and mining. This species is common and stable in suitable habitats, but habitat loss and degradation caused by livestock and firewood extraction are still considered threats to this species. The budget's frog has become popular in pet stores due to its comical flat appearance and intelligent behavior. It is well adapted to its environment, notably the harsh winter. During this time it will remain inactive underground in a cocoon of shed dead skin which protects it from losing water until they emerge. This species is generally very aggressive and will puff up when threatened to appear larger. 
If this behavior does not deter the intruder they will make a shrill screech, bite and corner the target. They are nocturnal and hunt at night, submerged up to their nostrils waiting for prey to pass by. They then lunge and swallow the prey whole. The Suriname horned frog is a bulky frog measuring up to 20 centimeters found in the northern part of South America. It has an exceptionally wide mouth, and has horn-like projections above its eyes. Females lay up to 1,000 eggs at a time, and wrap them around aquatic plants. Tadpoles attack each other soon after being hatched. This species was once considered the same species as Ceratophrys ornata. This dispute was later settled because the Suriname horned frog inhabits a different habitat than its smaller cousin and does not interbreed with it in the wild. All horned frogs hunt by remaining motionless, and waiting for prey. They will try to eat anything that can fit in their mouths, and some things that can't. Horned frogs are well known for their fearless reputation. They will attempt to consume animals, sometimes even the size of themselves. If threatened by a larger animal such as a human, these frogs can deliver a painful bite as they have several odontoid projections along their bottom and top jaws. Sometimes they will even jump towards their attacker, no matter their size and power. Lake Titicaca is one of the highest navigable lakes in the world, situated at an altitude of approximately 3,800 meters above sea level. Titicaca water frog has adapted to these high altitude, cold and low oxygen conditions. These frogs are mainly aquatic, spending much of their lives in the water. They are primarily nocturnal, coming out at night to forage for food. It is listed as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The species faces numerous threats, including habitat degradation, pollution, overharvesting for the pet trade, and the introduction of non-native species. Climate change may also impact their habitat. These frogs are quite large and are considered one of the largest aquatic frog species in the world. They have loose, wrinkled skin and a distinctive fold of skin along their sides. Like many amphibians worldwide, Darwin's frogs are vulnerable to the amphibian chytrid fungus, which has contributed to population declines in many frog species. What makes Darwin's frogs particularly interesting is their unusual reproductive strategy. They exhibit a form of parental care known as mouth brooding. After mating, the male carries the fertilized eggs in his vocal sac until they hatch into tadpoles. Once the eggs hatch, the male continues to care for the tadpoles by carrying them in his vocal sac. He protects them and provides them with a safe environment within his body. The tadpoles complete their metamorphosis into froglets while still inside the male's vocal sac. When they are fully developed, the male releases the tiny froglets through his mouth. Red-eyed tree frog is an arboreal frog with long limbs and webbed toes. Like all the frogs in its genus, they are nocturnal and do most of their hunting for insects at night. The males of this species are smaller than the females, and they display non-random mating patterns which suggest female choice for specific types of male. Despite its bright coloration, it is not poisonous. Its bright coloration can thus be more attributed to camouflage amongst the greenery of the surrounding jungle, as well as the startle reflex, which it can use to dissuade predators. If disturbed, the frog flashes its bright red eyes, which may startle predators and allow the frog to escape. Phenotypic plasticity in hatching is another interesting feature. If faced with the vibrational cues associated with predators, embryos may hatch early and fall into the water to escape predation. 
This response is extremely specific and mostly occurs only at vibrational patterns associated with predators. Larger than most Australian frogs, the Australian green tree frog reaches 10 centimeters or more in length. Its average lifespan in captivity, about 16 years, is long compared with most frogs. Docile and well suited to living near human dwellings, they are often found on window sills or inside houses, eating insects drawn by the light. The green tree frog screams when it is in danger to scare off its foe and squeaks when it is touched. Due to its appearance and behavioral traits, it is a popular exotic pet throughout the world. Males of Rosenberg's tree frog are split into intruder and resident categories, depending on if the male occupied a nest from which to call from, but intruder males rarely displace residents from their nests. The intruders would move frequently without giving advertisement calls, but would produce territorial and encounter calls. Male-male aggression and combat has only been observed in the Panamanian population of the species, not the Costa Rican one, likely due to the abundance of nest sites and low density of reproductively active males in the Costa Rican population. Paradoxical frog's name refers to the very large, up to 27 centimeters long, tadpole, which in turn shrinks during metamorphosis into an ordinary-sized frog, only about a quarter or third of its former length. The tadpoles feed mostly on algae. The adult frogs, which are active both day and night and always in or near water, eat insects and other invertebrates. When threatened, the frog uses its strong toes with an extra joint to stir up the muddy bottom and hide. The frog also uses this mechanism to find food on the bottom of lakes and ponds. Hartweg spike thumb frog natural habitats are high elevation cloud forests near rocky mountain streams, its breeding habitat. It has disappeared from some locations and appears to be on decline. The reasons are probably chytridiomycosis as well as habitat loss. The Mexican law protects it under the special protection category. The Japanese tree frog lives in a variety of habitats such as wetlands, forests, rivers, and mountains. They are generally located near vegetation near water sources and forests. They are carnivores that prey on insects and spiders. There is an estimated 100 million of these frogs in Japan, but the accuracy is limited due to difficulty in counting. Its behavior when exposed to microgravity has been experimentally investigated. These frogs, under such microgravity conditions, would bend their neck backwards. These frogs would also walk backwards, an observation consistent with the behavior of sick frogs. The combination of neck backwards movement and backward walking could be indicators of motion sickness in the frogs. They were shown to adapt to the microgravity and were able to improve their jumping and perching activity over time. Shovel-headed tree frog's head has broad labial flanges, giving it a spoon-like shape, as attested in its specific and vernacular names. The eyes are protuberant, moderately large and anterolaterally oriented. Breeding takes place in the temporary streams and ponds formed by rainfall and is therefore constrained to the rainy season. It is a common species that is not facing significant threats. Fire and changes in rainfall patterns are potential threats. The Tungara frog exhibits interesting behavior in male-female interactions. Male vocalizations are critical in female mate choice, and females often prefer males who give complex mating calls at a lower frequency rather than simple calls at a higher frequency. This long-distance vocalization is the primary mating behavior of Tungara frogs, and it is produced by a fibrous mass in the frog's larynx. It may also have a mutualistic relationship with tarantulas, where tarantulas participate in predator defense while frogs protect tarantula eggs. They have distinct coloration which helps defend them from predators.
The common name four-eyed frog refers to two inguinal poison glands that resemble eyes. When threatened, the frog lowers its head and raises its rear. When the frog adopts this posture, the poison glands are also raised toward the predator. The predator may also confuse the frog's raised posterior for the head of a larger animal. Gold-striped frog have a slender and elongated body with smooth skin. As their common name suggests, they are characterized by distinctive dark stripes or bands that run along their back, which contrast with their light-colored belly. These frogs are insectivorous and primarily feed on small insects and arthropods. They use their sticky tongues to capture prey. Glass frogs have specialized skin adaptations that make their ventral surfaces translucent. The skin in this region is incredibly thin, allowing light to pass through and revealing the underlying internal organs. The exact purpose of the transparency in glass frogs is not completely understood, but several theories have been proposed. Some researchers suggest that their transparency may help them blend in with the leaves and vegetation they inhabit, making them less visible to predators. The transparency could aid in thermoregulation by allowing sunlight to penetrate the skin and warm the frog's internal organs, particularly when they are basking in the sun. It is possible that the visibility of their internal organs during courtship displays serves a role in mate attraction, indicating the health and vitality of the individual. Predators might find it difficult to recognize glass frogs as prey when their internal organs are visible, potentially confusing or deterring would-be predators. Red-bellied toads, like many other members of the Melanophroniscus genus, possess toxic skin secretions. These toxins are derived from their diet of ants and other small arthropods and act as a defense mechanism against predators. These toads are primarily terrestrial but can climb low vegetation. They are known for their distinctive hopping gait and are active during the day. The cane toad is an old species. A fossil toad from the La Venta fauna of the late Miocene in Colombia is indistinguishable from modern cane toads from northern South America. Its reproductive success is partly because of opportunistic feeding, it has a diet, unusual among anurans, of both dead and living matter. The cane toad has poison glands, and the tadpoles are highly toxic to most animals if ingested. Its toxic skin can kill many animals, both wild and domesticated, and cane toads are particularly dangerous to dogs. Because of its voracious appetite, the cane toad has been introduced to many regions of the Pacific and the Caribbean islands as a method of agricultural pest control. It is now considered a pest and an invasive species in many of its introduced regions. Though the largest and most immediate threat is habitat loss, the reduced Houston toad populations are also vulnerable to automobile roadkill, severe air pollution from automobiles, predators, pesticides and drought. As land is being converted into land for agriculture, suburban sprawl, parking lots, wider highways and other car-centric design, there is less wetland and wooded areas for the Houston toad to be able to survive in. Creating ponds out of ephemeral wetlands also significantly affects the toads because of the dispersion of the calling males. The conversions to permanent ponds creates a higher risk to predators such as snakes and fish. The southern toad is nocturnal and lives in a burrow by day, or sometimes hides under a log or pile of debris. It occurs in woodland in cultivated land and gardens and sometimes stands beneath outdoor lights at night to pick up the attracted insects that fall to the ground. A 2006 study found that there was no difference in the number of toads found in wooded and clear-cut area, but there was a difference in the survival rates which was much higher in wooded area. In winter it may become inactive and remain in its burrow for extended periods. The golden toad is infamous for its precipitous decline and eventual extinction. The last recorded sighting of this species in the wild was in 1989. 
Extensive efforts to find surviving populations in its native habitat and nearby areas have been unsuccessful, and it is now considered extinct. The exact reasons for its extinction remain a subject of scientific research and debate. Several factors have been proposed, including climate change, habitat loss, fungal diseases like chytridia mycosis and pollution. However, no single cause has been definitively identified as the primary driver of its extinction. It is often cited as one of the most iconic examples of amphibian decline and extinction. Its dramatic disappearance has drawn attention to the global amphibian crisis and the threats facing many amphibian species worldwide. Adult Rentapia are primarily arboreal and live in riparian vegetation around small to moderately sized forest streams. The eggs are small and pigmented and laid as strings. The parotoid glands are large and distinct, and may be oval, circular, or triangular in dorsal view. The fingers have basal webbing and tips that are expanded into flat discs. The feet are fully webbed on all toes except the fourth one. The common toad is an inconspicuous animal as it usually lies hidden during the day. It becomes active at dusk and spends the night hunting for the invertebrates on which it feeds. It moves with a slow, ungainly walk or short jumps, and has grayish-brown skin covered with wart-like lumps. Although toads are usually solitary animals, in the breeding season, large numbers of toads converge on certain breeding ponds, where the males compete to mate with the females. Eggs are laid in gelatinous strings in the water and later hatch out into tadpoles. After several months of growth and development, these sprout limbs and undergo metamorphosis into tiny toads. The juveniles emerge from the water and remain largely terrestrial for the rest of their lives.